Hi, in this tutorial I am going to give explanation on lint. So this is considered as a lint part 2. In our previous tutorial, uh, I have given an explanation on lint introduction, the free properties of lint, the speed of lint and uh, here I have continued with the request from the master and response from the frame sorry response from the slave so actually the request and response are one of the you know the main significant in lin there how it works so if you clear on this request and response that means if you clear on this communication yes you will be uh, easily cope with the lin parameters and uh, other protocol other uh, you know other protocols which is in the lin yes so before that if you willing to join our group you can join in any of these only even to all so i have give a disc i have give a link in the description you can join and yeah properties of lin so anyhow we have given up uh, in a previous tutorial we have given the properties of lin and here we give a quick recap so it is a one wire bus it's a one master there is a master slave communication it uses a, it uses a simple communication interface it's a self synchronization the need with, without need of any cursor for example uh, if we have if the lin have a number of slaves the master will not wait for the slave to sync up so it will automatically sync up that have a, a very good property in the lin protocol that is a self synchronization and its speed is 20k per, per second so master slave architecture this is what the master slave architecture of lin see the left side we have seen the lin master and right side is the slaves so here it will start up as we know the lin uh, has start up with the self synchronization that is the master will uh, take up the synchronization it will uh, trans it will transmit the message the message header that is called as tokens here so here i have mentioned tokens so the tokens is a first uh, information or a data which is transferred from the lin master then this lin master will transmit these uh, uh, tokens to the slaves and here we have this is uh, see these tokens are referred as a message header this can be sent by the master's task there is a lin master then the message header consists of synchronous break there is synchronization break synchronization field and protected identifier that is called as pid then PID consists of message address and two parity bits. So here we go. We can see see in this I have just replaced these token instead of tokens. I have given the name as sync break sync field and PID. So this is what lin uh, master is to send to the lin slave. So after lin slave received these tokens or message header, then as soon it is to react uh, as a three ways. Either it will ignore or it will send. It will receive. See, transmitter so in, in a very simplified way I have given master to slave there is token or header used to transmit once slave receive any of these token or header then it start to response so if it is reject yeah it will be rejected if it uh, try is receive yeah it will just acknowledge if it again responds so this is how the lin will respond the slave will response see the response is sent by the slave task the response consists of data and checksum see in this way uh, so the any of these let's say for example uh, here only the slave 2 is to send because it, it is the right uh, slave to response for the particular uh, master uh, so sir so it, it is accumulated the data and checksum it is given as a response so this is how the request and response i get you are somewhat clear with what how the request and response goes so in a very easy way you can remember that master used to send the tokens which is also called as header which consists of sync field sync break and the parity that means uh, see here yeah and the uh, PID that is a protected uh, identifier that we inside that we have a parity two, two bits of parity that we will see in upcoming tutorials so how it works how the individual sync field sync break PID will works everything will be seen in the next tutorial and in this tutorial you just remember the request and response the transmitter used to send the tokens and the receiver that is the slave used to send the data with checksum so what checksum do, does everything will be seen in the next tutorial even a link schedule so i guess you you understood you got something in this if you if yes you just hit a like and uh, follow us in this and subscribe for more share to your friends catch you see you next tutorial with link part 3 very soon